Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. We're going to go back in time a little bit. We're going to work on a Daiwa, the D1000. It's a nice uh, freshwater spinning reel. This one's in nice condition. John sent it in. Unfortunately, it doesn't turn. So we're going to find out why this reel is doing that, and we're going to see if we can restore its function. So uh, stick along. We'll show you how to take this reel apart, how to service it, and hopefully how to get it fishing again once we identify what the issue is. The fear that I have is, well, these, uh, if there's a broken part, they're hard to find the parts. But let's get started. This should have a spool that simply removes by pushing down on the, the point. And uh, right away, I can see an awful lot of rust on this shaft. That's never a good sign. Uh, you can kind of see it there. I don't know if that's rust now or if that's some kind of uh, uh, like purple grease like uh, hot sauce or something. We'll find out. Uh, as we take these parts off the exterior, I'm going to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, please uh, hit that notification button. That way you'll see all the videos that I'm posting. And uh, you'll get to learn a lot about fishing reels and uh, how to repair them, how they're made, and uh, a little bit about uh, their histories from time to time. Well, I don't normally take this cap off, but I wanted to take that cap off to ensure that the handle was a screw-on, not a screw-through handle, because we have to remove the handle in order to fix the reel. Now, this reel is set up with a right size crank. That handle is adjustable to either side, so i got to remember when I put the reel back together that it's a right size crank, and the best way to do that, well, just leave that cap on and uh, that way I won't make a mistake when I go to uh, reinstall. When I go to reinstall, I'll have a common place for all of my pieces and parts. That's because I put all my pieces and parts into a parts tray. I use the bottom of a fast food container, but uh, I've used all kinds of things. The idea is that you have a central repository for your pieces and parts. That way you don't have to worry about where to look for them when it's time to install. And what I do with these side plate screws is I like to take the, the, the screws, put them in a corner of the tray, and I like to make sure that all of those screws are the same length. And here they are the same length. With those three screws removed, I can take the side plate off. And this looks like a very straightforward design. I guess the answer on that rust is it's a hot sauce kind of a thing. And uh, it's something's going on under the rotor then because, well, this just is a hard one to mess up. We're going to remove the bushing. We're going to remove the pin that holds the cross wind arm on. Maybe we just have to remove the cross wind arm itself. Then there's a screw. I don't know, we can, yes, we can remove the main gear. Then there's a screw holding on the axle shaft. Well, we need to take that off in order to get to the rotor, which I, I'm thinking the problem with this reel is under the rotor. And before I go too much further, I wanted to make sure to tell you to take pictures along the way. You want to do that so that you can recall any of the details that you may forget when you go to reinstall. Like, which way was that crosswind arm facing? Was it facing looking like the number 9? Or was it facing looking like the letter G? All right, well, we've just cleaned up the bottom to this. The good news is that there's been uh, attempts to service the reel because the grease is relatively new, and I don't see a lot of buildup of old grease in the case. Always good. While I'm at it, I'm going to just check to see if the override works. Well, interestingly enough, at least for a portion of it, it has something to do with that override. All right, we'll take the rotor off now. You can use a straight uh, wrench for this because there's no lip on the top of the rotor. Curious, this bale's got a lot of play in it. I'm wondering what's going on there as well. We'll address it all. Take the nut off, pull up the rotor, and let's see what's going on. Oh, we have that in there. So something is kind of miss here, and it, what's kind of miss here is that the, the spring 
that loads that bale. Remember I said there's a lot of play in that. The spring that loads the bale is set in correctly. And this little arm is getting stuck, which is why the reel doesn't, uh, doesn't complete the, uh, the cycle. It's jamming up against the side plate here where it's supposed to strike to uh, free it up. All right, well, let's show you how to do this then. We're going to remove the bale. I'm going to remove the bale wire. I, I like to work, when I work on a reel like this that has an issue with the bale trip itself, I do like to remove the bale independent of that bale arm because it's easier to work on the bale arm with the um, part in play than it is without another side. This spring on this side is no good either. We'll get to that in a moment. So keep the pieces and parts together. Let's go over to the side that's affected by this. Use a screwdriver that is appropriate for the slot in the screw. I just got finished doing a video on a Mitchell reel and the issue was that somebody had butterflied that slot. Well, that makes it almost impossible to uh, to rectify and get the, get the screws out after you damage it like that. So you want to make certain that you treat that with care. All right, well, this is always going to be interesting here. Penn has a similar setup to this for some of their reels. This one at least has the, uh, the screw holding this one in. The pen reel does not. And this is interesting as well. We took that uh, screw out. I just got to leave that off to the side for a moment. All right, let's take this off. This is a good place to tell you to take pictures. This is incorrect. This swing has to be all the way over on the other side. Uh, but take the pictures at least that way you will be able to identify what's going on I think that's flipped backwards too and uh, you can consult a schematic or you can just look at your pictures to figure out why your reel isn't doing what it's doing or should be doing this is always a little bit hard but I, I don't know if we have the clearance to do this here we probably don't but they're one turn short here in terms of the mounting of this. And I don't know if you can see that up close, but this lever here, this point here needs to be on this side and it needs to have tension. It gets the tension from rotating, but it's stopped here because it's banging up that. So the, what I'll call the dead side is actually the one down it needs to be moved up. How do you learn this stuff? <laughs> Just experience, I guess. After a while, I learn by doing. All right, that's not set properly now. So let's take this out. Let's see what we can figure here. We have a spring that has a flat tab on it. This is going to be hard to see. Flat tab. We have one with the hooked tab. The flat tab, I'm going to assume, goes in the slot of the rotor here. At least it would for a pen reel. This is not a pen reel. That doesn't seem right. All right, let's see, we have a, we have a hole now that we got to mount that into. This is never easy. Okay, once you have that pin, the, the tag end into that, you want to rotate this because now you're going to start putting the tension on it. And you're going to get over to the side. You're going to have to move it a little bit to clear that shoulder. And I know you can't see this, and I apologize, but it's tight working conditions here. And this one's not easy to do. We'll try and do our best to get it on the camera for you. 
but there's no guarantees. Okay, I think I got it. Before you go any further, take that screw, that is the hold down screw for this, and put that on. You want to hold that assembly in place. Wrong screw. Okay, before you notice that that piece was hanging out over here, now you'll see it comes out for the trip. When it gets hit, it comes back. So that's the trick to this side. It comes out, and this sets for the trip, it comes back in. All right, now we've got the other side of this, which is going to trip the, the main. This is how that sets now. So that's on this side, and we'll show you how that's going to operate as soon as I put this screw back in here. What is going to happen is your bale is going to open. It's going to push this side over here, like that. When it does that, that arm is going to push the trip lever in and then as soon as it fires it will release again. We can put this, nope, got too quick there, that one holds down this case, but at least I had the opportunity to show you how that's going to work. Good. All right, now that we know that that's the proper setup for this, and I mentioned I thought I had it, it was on backwards when we took it off. I have to go back to the film and make sure, but all right, now we can put this back in. Load that up, grab your piece. So the question of how does that fire it, how does it move it over here, again, it's going to move it over this way, and it's going to pull that out. How does that move it? Well, there's a stud on the back here that's going to control that. So we can put this on now. And we can put the screw back in to hold that down. Now you do this with the bail off because trying to wrestle with the bail on is just going to make it pretty much impossible. So if you can do that without the bail being on, you're all the better. Okay, it's going to come down. As you can see, it's going to push it out. And then when it retracts, it's going to come back in. So that's properly set there. Okay, we got another one over here on this side, which is the actual release spring. That's trapped under this... Uh, this carrier here, so let's see what we can do to put that the right way. So this has got a, a, a common setup for a bail trip swing. Okay, to set the spring on this side, find the short leg. There's a hole in the side case here. And I like to leave the tab all the way over there so that you, you can see it outside. Then find the hole in the back. The back is the one with the stud. And I have to raise it and push down. There you go. So that's how to get it on the post. And now you need to put that screw on to hold it there. I'll tighten that up. Not all the way, I want to get that little shroud. But I'll tighten it most of the way and just leave a little gap behind there for that shroud. Okay, we have the shroud goes next. It rides in the channel, up under. And it needs to go in square. And sometimes you just have to play with it a little. But eventually you will get it correct.
There we go. And take that screw that goes into there. And we'll go ahead and put that on. Now we should have an awful lot of tension on that. Look at that. That's the way it belongs now, not uh, the way it was. Next up then we can reinstall the clip here on the bail. I think this is some kind of a replacement screw here. This does not look like the screw that went on there. And let's give it a flip. Well, you certainly got a lot of flip activity there now. Okay, let's give it a test. Open it up, spin it. Yep, there we go. Doing what it should be doing. All right, there you go. That's how to fix that bail assembly. All right, well, we got a little bit of cleanup in aisle seven. Not much. We can pull up the main gear here. I'm just going to use a cotton swab to take care of that. This is that. Um, I believe this is the Quantum Hot Sauce. I have no problems with hot sauce. I have no problems with most fishing wheel oils and greases. I'm just going to oil that bearing there. This collar for the anti-reverse, which is a traditional dog, has an arm on it. You should be able to see it there. It's the little hook. That's going to belong in the hook rack right there. So let's go ahead and put that back on. Spin it and get that embedded properly. There you go. And uh, we can button up the top now. Have that rotor nut and our 10 millimeter nut. So, if you have any questions on fishing reel repair, maybe you're working on one, maybe you're stuck on something, maybe you're like John, you have a reel that uh, isn't working properly. If you want to ask that question, leave it in the comment section. I'll be happy to uh, respond to you with whatever it is that I. I know about it, and if I don't know about your question, I'll try and point you to somewhere where it is. Okay, there's a little bit of older stuff on here. Let's just gonna use a tip of a screwdriver here to get that off. While I'm doing that, you want to check the teeth on this main gear. You want to make sure everything in here is uniform and clean. And uh, if you have any debris sitting in those teeth, just get a, a brush, like I'm doing here. Just brush it through. And that'll help the performance of the wheel. Alright, we'll put the grease on this. Now you saw me, I oiled the pinion gear, I did not remove it. Uh, the real issue here was the bearings. But uh, you can remove that uh, bearing and uh, clean that pinion gear as well. I'm looking into the pinion gear right now. It's it's clean, so there's no real issue with that. Just gonna make sure we get a, a healthy dose of grease. You don't have to get it in every tooth. And then we'll do the same thing up top here. Make sure that that pinion gear gets greased. And we oiled the. Uh, the bearing from up top, you can do it from the bottom too. You can just turn your reel over and just insert some in there. Give it a spin. This one's turning beautifully. Alright, we're going to take the main gear then. We're going to put that back in. Oh, I probably have to put that. You going to have to put the crosswind block piece in first. Bushing came out with the main gear, so I'm just going to put that bushing back in. We took the axle shaft off without uh, having to remove the main gear, so let's go put the axle shaft back in at this point. Light coat of grease onto the axle shaft after you wipe it clean is good. This sure matches all up. Once you have the axle shaft in, make sure that the hole aligns with the hole in the crosswind block. And go ahead and grab your screwdriver.
screwdriver and put that piece back in. So these are another one of those nice Daiwa reels. They're kind of hard to beat. You can see by the, the design here. It's relatively few moving parts and the materials are strong. That's always a sign or an indication that the reels are good. I know that there's people out there that switch off those side plate uh, pieces. They put in the bearings. If you want to do that, that's okay. All right. Once you completed that step, take your side plate, put that back on, look for your three equal size screws in your parts tray. And we can install these. So if uh, you're like John, if you have a reel that maybe you're just stumped about, maybe you've started and something's gone awry and you just can't uh, help but uh, figure out how to get it back together again, well, I'm a problem solver too, so I'll try to help you either by servicing your reel if you don't have time to do that or the inclination to do that. But uh, most of all, I want to try this as a teaching moment. This is one where I try to show folks how to service the reels themselves. And uh, I'm not going to turn you into necessarily a great reel mechanic, but if you can service your reel and keep it fishing, that's kind of what this is all about. I can't wait to see the, uh, the bail trip. So. One more screw here. I'll put that uh, spool back on, put the handle back on, we'll give it a go. Make sure that we've solved John's problem for him. Of course, we want to make sure it turns. Oh, well, there you go. So first and foremost, it's turning, and it has the anti-reverse, so all good there. And of course, the critical one, oops, the critical one is, does the bail trip, all uh, the bail trips. So you've seen a lot today. You've seen how to diagnose a problem. You saw how to correct that problem by setting the bail properly. You've seen how to generally service a reel overall and how to give this reel a second chance. So the Daiwa D1000, very nice reel. The only thing else you would need to do on this reel is to service the drag washer. <coughs> this spins off, this is very much like a Mitchell kind of an adaptation. Spins off, you have a series of washers in here. And in this case, we just have the Teflon washer and all you want to do is inspect and make sure it's clean. You don't oil the Teflons, but that's all you need to do there. And uh, just reinstall. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something today. I hope you subscribe to my channel to continue your learning and to see all the fishing reels and reports that I, I do provide via YouTube. And I appreciate everybody who's subscribed so far, and I'm always anxious to... Uh, I have a few more subscribers in there so that I can continue to provide the information I do and uh, reach as many people as I can. All right, well, that's this reel. And uh, to everybody who's our first responders and central personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do. To all, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.